Hello, I'm Colin. Welcome to Wing A Thing. So, just so you guys know me, I'm actually a South African citizen. So, anything that I am discussing will more than likely be in regards to South African things. We'll be discussing things like drones and the different implications it has in South Africa, but not necessarily overseas. Because I know that a lot of videos that you see on YouTube and that all pertain to to the laws outside of South Africa, that being UK law, US law, even EU laws, um, very few really contain or pertain to anything that happens in South Africa or even in Australia or the likes. So everything is done for everything in the North or Northern Hemisphere and we in the South actually do often fall short. So if we ever want to find anything else, we find these things that pertain to those countries, but it's very difficult for us to actually get the right information for us. Now, I'm going to talk about drones in this episode. Um, and yeah, I hope that you guys find it interesting. Drones fall under civil aviation, uh, remotely piloted aircraft systems, part 101 in South Africa. This covers everything from the little black hornet nano, as well as the Dassault Neuron of 7 tons. The little hornet is 14 grams and the Dassault Neuron is 7 tons of weight. So that just tells you how wide an area this civil aviation law actually covers. Um, all of the drones that we as normal civilians will have will generally be below uh, seven kilograms. There's very, very few that will be above that, but generally, if you're above that, you are then operating it for uh, profit. So, just so everyone knows, if you are flying a drone that is below seven kilograms, that being your average little drone, you are not permitted to fly your drone beyond radio line of sight in South Africa. This is also referred to as visual line of sight by other people. So, i.e., if you can't see it with your eyes, it is too far. Even if you are using a uh, first-person view, FPV, um, it actually doesn't matter in South Africa. You are not permitted to fly beyond visual line of sight. If you are flying a drone with a mass above 7 kilograms, but below 20 kilograms, you are sometimes permitted to operate with extended visual line of sight, so that being up to about 500 meters or so, but you're only permitted to do so with permission from the Civil Aviation Authority. Um, you will not be permitted to fly um, extended visual line of sight if you are a hobbyist. This is only permitted for commercial or experimental purposes. And experimental doesn't mean that you're taking a civilian or hobbyist drone and flying that. That doesn't count as an experimental drone. We're talking about things like your desaults and your military grade stuff. So if you're doing things like that, sure, go ahead. You're more than welcome to fly extended visual line of sight, but you need civil aviation authority first. Um, and the only exception to this rule really are those above 150 kilograms. Um, but Again, those are generally your military aircraft that are flying. So drones and that with that are military, they're actually fine. They can actually just fly. That too still actually requires certifications and permission to do so. Um, so just make sure that you fall within that. Uh, commercial drones fall into categories one and two. So that being your end user. Um, so being normal civilians like us. We fall in commercial being normal civilians. Um, the drones to be sold in South Africa, I know that the, the laws or that the law enforcement in South Africa is very lax on this. However, all drones are supposed to be sold with a notification to the end user of the requirements of South African CATS 101. And this is either with a written notification or a packaging label. And this has to actually state the remote piloted aircraft system, here on reference as RPAS, may only be used 
for the individual's personal and private purposes where there is no commercial outcome, interest or gain. I.e. you earn money off of it, you're actually flying that drone illegally. You have to actually do get a legal drone to do so. The RPAS can only be used in restricted visual line of sight, which means within 500 meters of the pilot and never to exceed the height of the highest obstacle within 300 meters of the pilot. So if there's a tree in the area, you can't fly higher than that. You are not permitted to do so. The tree is your highest point. Um, <clears throat> and then during the flight, the pilot must be able to maintain unaided visual contact with the device to manage its flight and collision avoidance. Again, first person view doesn't count. You cannot fly your drone beyond visual line of sight. It can't, if you're flying FPV, it's then aided visual contact. So you have to be able to see it. Binoculars, that actually also counts as you actually breaking the law. You are using an aid to see your drone. You have to see it with the naked eye, no other allowance. Uh, then the notification must also still state the pilot must observe all statutory requirements relating to liability, privacy and any other laws enforceable by any other authorities. So you crash your drone into somebody, you're actually liable to be going to jail. Just straight and simple. You may not break a law that is enforced by any authorities, that being police, civil aviation, whatever. You have to always run the entire drone legally. And privacy, that's always a big one because a lot of the time that's actually why drones end up in the news is because there's somebody who got a new drone for Christmas or their birthday and they go and fly it and then they go and fly over their neighbor's backyard and the neighbors don't like it and now it's a brief breach of their privacy. You're not actually allowed to fly in those conditions. So just keep it straight and simple. Go fly it at your nearest hobbyist um, place. So whether it be at an airport or anywhere else that allows you to fly drones or remote controlled aircraft, you are actually allowed to go fly there. And there you can fly within the restrictions. Again, it's within 500 meters and no higher than the highest object around there. Of course, though, there will always be exceptions you can kind of get away with it but just understand that should somebody actually come and argue with you they do actually have the right to moan at you about it if you fly too high then the other thing that has to be stated on the notification the SA cats notification so for all other purposes in the SA cats notification the RPAS must first be approved by the South African Civil Aviation Authority um, with by means of a RPAS letter of authority. So that means that you are allowed to actually fly the drone within South Africa. All RPAS must be registered by the Civil Aviation Authority prior to you. So this is now with uh, regards to if you're flying it for commercial purposes. So you're flying it for monetary gains or anything like that. It has to be registered with the CAA to make sure that you actually are allowed to fly it. Um, and the RPAS may only be operated in terms of Part 101 of the Civil Aviation Regulations, which includes specific requirements that the operator shall hold an RPAS pilot license. This does not mean that if you are a normal hobbyist that you need a license. This is only if you're using it for monetary gains. If you're using it for monetary gains, you have to get a license. You may not fly it to actually do it. So if you are fricky who's busy flying it to go make a quick bucket to cousin's wedding, you're actually flying it illegally and it, you can actually be fined. Uh, if, if you fly it incorrectly, you could theoretically go to jail as well. So just don't take the chance, get your license, make sure that you're covered. There's always public liability and all that if you go into um, the commercial side of things. So just make sure that you fly things properly, guys. So things that you are not allowed to do, um, unless this is approved by the African Civil Aviation Authority. So obviously if you are 
uh, approve or you're doing it for commercial gains, you will get a license and be allowed to kind of do these things. But before you're allowed to do it, you have to get written proof from the South African Civil Aviation Authority that you can do this. So this is things like flying near or by manned aircraft. You may not fly within 10 kilometers or closest to an aerodrome, so that being an airport, helipad, or an airfield. So any of those three things you may not actually fly close to within 10 kilometers, and that's a radius of 10 kilometers. Um, if you are a hobbyist, your, your drone may not weigh more than 7 kilograms. So really if you flying, even like a Mavic or anything like that, these are relatively large drones, but they may not weigh more than 7 kilograms. So make sure you stay within that uh, restriction. You may not fly in controlled airspace. So if you are flying by an airport, of course that's controlled airspace. It means that you are flying by manned aircraft. So it just kind of all falls together. Don't fly within controlled airspace, restricted airspace, or prohibited airspace. You may not fly within 50 meters of any person or group of people, like a sports field, road races, schools, social events, etc. So even if you are actually flying within your community and you fly over a person, you've just broken the law. You may not fly within 50 meters of a person. Um, and you may not actually fly over any property without the permission of the property owner. So if you fly over your neighbor's house and they didn't give you permission to do so, you've broken the law, you can go to fine or go to jail. Then, with every bad thing, there's obviously some good things as well. So some little points that they always say you may do is always fly your RPAS in a safe manner at all times. So that being, don't fly over anybody. Fly it in airspace that you're allowed to fly in. So that being um, like a remote controlled hobby field or even if it's a soccer field that you have permission to fly in. You can fly there so long as it falls outside of the rules. So, if you, or not outside of the rules, you may fly in a soccer field if you are given permission to do so. There's nobody else around. Blah de blah. There's all the rules that you have to follow. If you can fly in the area, you can fly it. Just make sure that you stay within the rules. Keep your RPAs within visual line of sight at all times. It's the law. You have to do so. Sorry for anybody who thought that right or flying an FPV drone gets them away from this. You may not fly it. So I know a Mavic Pro, for instance, you can fly it up to seven kilometers. You can fly it. Legally, you may not. If your drone goes down or somebody actually just follows your drone home and they catch you, you're going to jail or you're getting a fine. Just don't do it, guys. Fly your RPAS in daylight and in clear weather conditions if flown outdoors. So obviously, um, you may only fly it during the day. You may not fly a drone or a remote controlled aircraft during, at night at all. Unless, of course, for commercial purposes and you're making money out of it and you've got permission, then of course you may, but otherwise, don't do it. And then, just something that every hobbyist should do is you should inspect your uh, aircraft before each flight to ensure everything is working correctly. And pretty much, guys, that's it. There's not really too much to it, but just fly the drone safely, fly it properly, and no one will get hurt. You can't get fined or go to jail. And if you actually just follow these simple things, everything will be fine. So have fun, guys. Fly safe.